Okay. Hello. We are going live now. Um, we have about we have about two more minutes left till the actual start time, but I thought I'd just get on here, make sure things are streaming away. Um, yeah, looks good on my end. Let's see, we've got a couple of people joining us already. Hello to home cooking with as as I. Hello. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll give people a few more minutes to, to tune in, log in, get settled in here. Hello, Pamela. Thanks for joining me. And we are painting, well, I'm going to be painting two. I will be attempting to, well, I will be succeeding in painting two paintings for you. Um, the American flag version, the Canadian flag version. Um, but of course, you at home can do either or. Or if you're feeling bold, you can try to do both. But I might recommend just sticking with one for tonight and then maybe tomorrow or sometime in the future you could do the second one or even do a different flag and skyline cityscape um, but i'll be showing like both hopefully simultaneously in a way that uh, people can follow one or the other so there might be little bits of downtime but that's good for your paint drying right Okay, um, yeah, the supplies, I'm gonna go over the supplies in a moment, uh, but you can kind of see everything you need kind of like in the frame. Uh, the uh, inspirational quote is uh, an optional supply. <laughs> I always have this kind of like along the wall with my art things just inspire me every morning when I when I see my art. Okay, um, yeah, we've got quite a few people already logged in. Hello to everyone, you know, wherever you're from, whether you're from the States or from Canada, let me know in the chat, in the comments, uh, where you guys are from. I'm in, I'm in Canada, I'm in London, Ontario, so I'm about two hours uh, west of Toronto. I'm not in the Durham region myself, even though I'm part of Artist Palette Durham region, but really, you could be from anywhere anywhere at all let's see if we can't get a few more people what time is it it is a minute after i will i will start going over the supplies in front now the good thing about um these youtube live events is that um even though i'm live you guys are able to pause the live feed and even set the the playback back so let's say i'm, I'm getting ahead of you just hit pause, do your thing, and then catch up. If you miss something, just set the playback back and you can hear it again. It's, it's wonderful what technology can do. And after the live is finished, it will be posted on our channel forever. Artist Palette Germ Region on YouTube, it'll be on there forever. So if you wanna just watch tonight, and then maybe tomorrow or sometime in the future, you want to actually do the painting, that is possible. Yeah, so it's just, it's wonderful that we, we are doing it live, but you are able to go at your own pace. You definitely can. Pamela's in Fort Lauderdale. Hello to Anneli. Hello, Angie from Detroit. Minerva in Alberta. Thanks for joining me. All right, let's go over the supplies. Uh, I have masking tape. Just regular masking tape. I'm gonna use this for the border of each painting. I'm also going to use this for the stripes of the American flag. So if you are gonna do the American flag version along with me, definitely get some masking tape. Let's say you don't have masking tape. You can do this with a ruler. Ruler, so um, you do need a ruler for both American and Canadian uh, versions here. Nice straight lines, making our measurements, etc. Masking tape are the first supplies that I have right here. Um, yeah, you can kind of see everything that I have. Let's just go over it. I've got a couple of paint brushes. So I've got one that's kind of thinner and pointier, one that's a little fatter and thicker, but you know, nothing special. You could do both of these paintings with just like one paintbrush. Um, mine are kind of pointy, like 
you know, watercolor brushes mostly are, but if you had, say, a flat brush, that would be okay, round brush, this is what I'm using. Um, if you're curious about the numbers, um, mine is a six and an eight Dugato. Eh, just something I got on, on Amazon. Um, I'm gonna move this out of the way, but a good thing to keep in mind. Let's put it over here. Um, I have my normal watercolor set. I got this one on Amazon. It is Mei Liang is the brand I'm using. A nice little travel set. Um, you know, not professional by any standard, just a fun, bright little set that I use a lot. If you're using something like this, like a like pans or cakes, I like to call them, have another area where you're gonna do some mixing. So you don't go right from the little pan to the paper. Do a little mixing beforehand. So if you don't wanna use your lid for that, um, a small plate, a uh, plastic or ceramic palette, uh, maybe a styrofoam container. I've often used that. Just another area to either add two colors together if you want to mix, you know, red plus orange and make a reddish orange, or to add more water to your paint. So if you don't want it as um, opaque and rich and dark, add more water. And I would do that in this area. That's my set of paint, uh, water and paper towel. Um, I have scrap paper and scissors. Now this I'm gonna use for the Canada flag, but I won't use it for the American flag. So if you're doing the American flag, you don't need scrap paper and scissors. I'm just gonna use this to help me with the, the Canadian maple leaf and what I'm gonna use it for. Let's say you don't have any scrap paper nearby, any scissors in your house at all. You can do your maple leaf with just a ruler and just draw it with your ruler. But I'm gonna make a, an easy maple leaf out of cutting, you know, fold it in half, cut it. That's what that's for. Um, and then I've got a pencil. I like to use a mechanical pencil when I'm doing watercolors and an eraser. I have a squishy, kneadable eraser, but really any kind of pencil, any kind of eraser. Um, you could have just a, a regular school pencil with a pink eraser, that'd be fine. If you do have a choice of different pencils, if you have like a set of pencils, uh, use an H versus a B. So H pencils are lighter, thinner, harder leads. Bs are softer, thicker, darker leads. We want light thin lines. So this is what I'm going to use for pencil and eraser. And then these are optional. I've got a black pen. Um, we're going to do the pen work after the painting. So it's okay if your pen is not waterproof, but mine is a waterproof pen because sometimes I'm doing the pen before the watercolor work. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to do it after. So it's okay if it's not perfectly waterproof. This one was from Amazon, a permanent marker, ultra fine point any kind of micron pen. Micron pens would be perfect for this. And then I've got a white like paint pen. Shake it up. Those are optional. You can just stick with the watercolor look, but I just kind of added all these fun, funky lines and things throughout. Um, and then the windows of the buildings, I use the paint pen. But if you don't have a paint pen, try um, acrylic paint with a thin brush. You could try white out, a white out pen, um, white ink, gouache as options. Um, and I think that's all the supplies and oh, paper, paper, paper. So my paper is quite big today. Um, oh, that really like changes the, the view there. Uh, my paper is 15 by 11, 15 by 11 but you can have any size paper, maybe a 12 by nine, nine by 12, kind of a standard size. I think I need to close, see this like white patch, that's my sun streaming in my window and I gotta close that. Bear with me, I'm still here, closing the blind. How's that, that's a little better I think. Is that the spot? That's the spot. I think that's a little better. So I will be doing both of these for you. Focus on one or the other.
take your time. And don't forget, you can pause the live feed, even though it's live. Pause it to do your drawing, to catch up, take a break. All right, get out your pencils, your erasers, your rulers, your masking tape, all those supplies we are just talking about. First thing is just regular masking tape around your edges. Um, it's kind of tough to see the white on the white, but, but you know what I mean. Putting tape all the way around to make a nice white crisp border. Uh, painter's tape would be fine. Um, just something that will not tear your paper. Um, sometimes people use washi tape. Denise, yes, I'm using watercolor paper. Uh, so my brand, some people like to know the brand sometimes, is Canson XL. So it's kind of a medium quality paper for medium price. It's not the fanciest watercolor paper out there. Um, this could be done on, let's say, a, a canvas with acrylics if you wanted to try that instead of watercolors. I got to do two of these. Two flags for me. Yeah, you can do any flags. So what if you wanted to do, um, like in future, you want to do um, like a gift for someone and do a flag that's meaningful to them. And you could switch up the like the city skyline shapes. Let's see, what can I think of? Maybe the um, let's say the the French flag with Eiffel Tower. Let's say you could do the Australian flag with the uh, the Sydney Opera House. Wouldn't that look amazing? Um, yeah, even just instead of the American flag with kind of New York style buildings, something from where you're at would be good. Okay, so we're not quite done with the masking tape. Okay. We're going to do two at once. So if you are, let's do, we'll start with the, a little bit of the American one first. One, two, three seven red stripes and I'm going to use my masking tape to help me with those find the middle of your flag so not the middle of like like I mean the middle of inside the lines of the masking tape that middle find the middle of that and it's going to be different for everyone because we have different size papers find the middle like horizontally the horizontal middle. Mark it with your ruler. The horizontal middle. Okay, there's the horizontal middle of my American flag. Bring that light a little closer. And draw your pencil lines lightly because we're going to erase any visible pencil lines later with our eraser. That is the horizontal middle of the American flag. Get in my tape. I put a piece of tape directly on the middle of that line. Middle of that line. The best you can. Mine's a little bit see-through so I can kind of see the pencil line I've made. Right in the middle there. So the pencil line is under my tape right now. I have one piece of tape right on the pencil line. We're gonna put another piece of tape directly above that. It seems weird, bear with me. Directly above that. So now I have two pieces of tape, okay? And do a third one. We're going to put three pieces of tape. So I'm going right below. Right below. Oh, a little off. As straight as you can. So I have the pencil line with three pieces of tape. Three pieces of masking tape. What's with all the tape? 
So because the middle of our flag line is red and then white, white, I'm going to peel the middle piece. The middle piece of tape is coming off. Now don't chuck it, we're gonna use it. We're gonna use that. So I have a piece of tape, blank, well, it has a pencil line through it, and then another piece of tape. So that means this blank one in the middle with the pencil line, that's gonna be red. That's gonna be red. That means the next one's also gonna be red, but we need to make our line for that. So I'm just gonna put this piece of tape right there. Okay, get a fresh piece of tape. So really we're ending up masking the white lines. Just the white lines are getting masked. Okay, so this will be a white line. I can even put it down. So the middle blank one is red, you can put an R. The white piece of tape is gonna be white, just leave it white. So that's red, this is white. This piece of tape is on where the red line's gonna be. So I'm gonna take that one off. It's just like a placeholder. It's a placeholder. And then I put it up above. Again, it sounds silly. It's our placeholder. So that means this one's red. This is white. This is, well, gotta get a fresh piece. Mm -hmm, all the way. Another one. So this is red, so this one's white. Oh, broke the pencil tip. Peel it up again. So the only piece of the tape I have left on there is where the white is going to be. And maybe about to here. One more piece of tape. And then I'm gonna peel up that placeholder one again. We're gonna keep using that placeholder. So I've got, this is red, tape is white. This is red, tape is white. This is red. And that's all we need. So we need the middle one, it's the middle red plus one, two, three reds above it. We're gonna do the same below. Get my placeholder, which is getting a little curly. And in doing this, all of our stripes are equal thickness, as close as we can get them. You can, you know, instead of using tape, mark it out with a ruler. So that's red, this is white. So this next one's red fresh piece of tape. Move our placeholder down again. And sometimes we might get bleeds. Some watercolor paint might get underneath our tape. That'll be okay. We're gonna add some lines with our pens later that would distract from those little bleeds and that would be okay. So that's white, this one's red, this one's white. Oh yeah, another piece. White, that's red, this is white. Move the placeholder tape. Okay, I've got red, red, red. I think I might just eyeball this. So the last one, I just have to cover up a tiny bit. That'll be my final stripe. I just eyeballed that one. This is red, this is red. Okay, so I don't know if you can see my little R's and W's. So I have the middle pencil line, which I've marked as R, because that's gonna be red. Then I have tape, and then R, and then tape, and then R, and then tape, and then R. So I've got three, the middle is four, five, six, seven, three above, three below, one in the middle, seven red, seven red stripes. So there's gonna be 
six white stripes plus the white border. So that's to get the American flag started. The Canadian flag, let's get that one started. Pencils, rulers. Um, I'm gonna draw a line in the very middle, middle of my Canada flag. Um, well, very middle and yeah, measure your paper, measure your middle. Everyone's gonna be different because we have different size papers. Just find the middle vertically, make a light line right down the middle. So that's where our Canada uh, maple leaf, that's the point of symmetry right down that middle line there. Hello, Lynn. Thanks for the emoji. <laughs> okay, um, I guess we need to look at it. The red bars, would you say that's about a quarter-ish? So quarter, quarter, and then that would be like half of the total area of the flag-ish. I'm not sure the exact, I'm sure there are exact measurements, but I'm gonna call it about a quarter and a quarter, and that middle represents a half. So find the halfway-ish of one side of your flag-ish. <laughs> my dad's knocking on the door. <clears throat> I can tell it's my dad or my mom. I don't know why, because I think it's unlocked. Was it not unlocked? <laughs> okay, so I'm finding the halfway vertical of this half. So this will be my red bar. This will be part of my white. And then I'll do another red bar over here. Um, I make them about the same size. So I did three inches on this side, so it just makes sense to do three inches on this side. But you do you because you have a different size paper than me. Mark it, draw a line. Remember, light lines. If some pencil lines are visible in the final painting, it's okay. We're going to put a bunch of distracting black and white lines to distract from that. All right, so that these are going to be red. If you, if you need to mark it down, red, red, just to remind yourself, do so. Okay, to make the actual maple leaf, I'm going to use my scrap paper and my scissors, any scrap paper, I just took a post-it note and said, scrap paper, an old coupon, a flyer, anything, whatever you have laying around, an old envelope, just cut it up. Yeah. Um, so to make this uh, maple leaf shape, we're first gonna make a triangle, and then we'll add the three pronged shapes onto the triangle. Here's a piece of scrap paper. I'm gonna fold it in half. Fold your scrap of paper in half. Okay, we're gonna make a triangle. Um, oh, should I fold it in half this way? Maybe this way. Maybe I'll fold it this way. Yeah. Um, I just kind of like lay it on my painting to kind of give me a rough idea of how big I need to make this. So, you know, the triangle has to be on one half maybe like this, out to here, something like that. And remember, this is the, the folding point. So make your triangle along the fold. Otherwise, when you unfold it, you'll have two triangles. Cut it. See what you have. Open it up. See what you have. OK. Remember, this is like the bottom portion of the maple leaf shape. So it's it's not going to be like up to here. That's too big. because That's where our, our prongy part of the leaf goes. That's not bad. I might make it a scooch smaller. So I do want a little bit of white space to either side of it. Okay, that's a good triangle. Because it's got a little white space here and here. Pretty good. Um, I'm going to do one more thing to this triangle, fold it back up, and cut a little bit off the bottom so that it goes up in the middle. See how the bottom is not flat? It goes up a little. 
So here's my triangle. Here's that, that fold. I'm going to take a little bit off the bottom edge. A little. So it goes a little up. See that? Just like that. That's a good, that's good. Here's where the pencil comes in. Trace that triangle. Light trace. Keep it steady. Lightly trace that triangle. Okay, I've done it very light. Can you see that? Yes, I think so. Um, I've left room for my stem, right? The leaf has a stem, so I do have enough room for that. And there's enough room up here for the, the three-pronged part of my leaf. Okay, here is my other random piece of scrap paper. Um, yeah, I think I'll fold it in half. Either way, you want to fold that in half. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. So I kind of just like line it up where, where I want it to go. And we're going to draw half of this shape, right? Because we fold it open and we get the other half. So maybe like this down. And then up and out. And then whoosh, down like that. And I cut it. And we, if you, you know, make it too big, too small, whoops, get another scrap paper. Okay. This down, up. So this is what it looks like. Oh yeah, unfold it. See how it, see how it works out for you. You can make a new one if it's a little wonky. That's, yeah, I'm not mad at that. That was pretty close. It's like a crown, an extended, very tall crown, like you might see in a children's picture book, something like that. Um, let's say yours is like shorter than mine is. Maybe it's like this big. Don't just like stick it down here. Put it where you want the tip to be and then just extend those lines with your ruler. So you can adjust the position of where the pointy bits are to wherever you need them to be. Okay, I'm not mad at that. I'm gonna trace that, give it a light trace. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we are adding like distracting squiggly lines all around these shapes after, which will help distract from imperfections. There we go. I'm not going all, all, all the way down for mine personally, because I know I'm just going to erase those bits later. But if you want to go all the way down the sides and connect with the triangle, you can. I just kind of ended it sort of here. All right. You know, we're keeping it nice and symmetrical. All right. Um, yeah, these bits, the side three prong leaf parts, if you're happy with the shape you have here and you just want to repeat it here and here, you can definitely do that. It will look like a lovely maple leaf. I'm just going to make mine a scooch smaller than the main one. So this one and this one will be just a tiny bit smaller. And that's real easy to do. We just fold that back in half and just cut those same lines just a scooch in. So like maybe half a centimeter in. Just thin it a little bit. And you could try just shaving off a little, see what you like, and then shave off a little more. So I just shaved down all the sides, fold, shave it down a little. So see, it's a little bit smaller than the original, but just a little bit. And then this one's gonna come out this way, and that one's gonna come out that way. You know, I actually kind of wanted it to be, yeah. That's not bad. 
Let me see my original one. Where's my other, other one? I have a yellow version. This is my yellow version. I might use that one. Play around with your, I have this one too. And I might do, I might do this one. Play around with your cutout, see what you like. Uh, this one's not bad. Mine's gonna probably touch my red bar a little bit. That's okay. It's not um, a perfect rendition of the Canada flag. Stylized. Yeah, I don't mind that. That's not bad. And then we'll have to move on here again. Try to have it symmetrical on both sides. Angle and distance. Give it a light trace. It's not bad. And then the little the little stem. If you want to just use your ruler and add a stem, you can do that. Where should my stem go to? Maybe about here. I'm making my stem a little bit a little bit wider at the base than when it attaches to the leaf. But you do you. If you use a straight down rectangle, that'd be fine. Okay, um, erase all these extra lines we don't need. All those extra lines we don't need. Erase those extra lines. So Canada, we're almost set for the pink part. Back to the American one. So we have our lines. I hope you guys were able to make your lines as evenly as possible. I am gonna erase that middle horizontal line before we paint on it. We also need to mask off where the blue will be, where the stars will be. Um, yeah, that kind of fits both of them there. Um, it's a rectangle versus a square. Um, it sits on top of this middle red line. So find your middle red line. That's gonna be fully red all the way across. That middle one is gonna be fully red. But then just above it, we need to put a piece of masking tape like this. So get a piece maybe like that big, sure. So don't put any tape on the middle red line. Um, how big is my rectangle gonna be? Not, not half, but not a third. More than a third, but less than a half. Maybe, maybe here. a vertical piece of tape right here, not entering into the middle red horizontal line above that. So this will be blue. Don't do anything with red and white in here. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. We will get to doing our first layer of paint. Um, where's my little sheet of transparencies? So when I say transparencies, I mean the, the see-throughness of the paint. So my the red of the flag here and here, the red here, the stripes. Mine are lighter. I like to do maybe a, maybe a one, probably a two, a little lighter. You could do a three. You could do a three if you wanted a little more rich. And then when we go to do the rainbow colors on top, we do those a little bit heavier transparency, more pigment mixed into our water, maybe like a four or a five. But you can do it any, any level of transparency you want. If you want these to be nice, rich, dark reds, you can do that. I just did a lighter so that it's a little easier to put the stuff on top. 
All right. Um, paintbrush water, paints. So I'm going to start on my American flag. Of course, if you're doing the Canada flag, you can just get right into painting that red. But I'm going to have to do both. I'm just getting rid of my little R's. I know, I know where the red's going to be. Red, nice rich red. And like, I moisten the red. I bring it over to my little mixing area. Add in some more water. If you want to use an even bigger brush than I'm using, go for it. Nice wide brush, a flat brush. And I'm trying not to cram paint under the tape. So all my brush strokes will either be going along with the tape or away from the tape, going in this motion. I'm not making motions to try to tuck the paint under the tape. We don't want that. But if you have little leaks, little bleeds, that's okay. There's my first red. And these will go fast. It's uh, just one wash. That's all we need, one wash. Yeah, washi tape. Some people use washi tape, painter's tape. Let's say you have a very, very sticky masking tape and has been known to tear your paper in the past. Just de-stickify it by, you know, rubbing it on your, your sleeve or your jeans, something like that. The red that I'm using, mine's called Matter Red. It's kind of a, I would say it's a more warm red. Kind of got a little bit of a pinky, pinky heading towards purple tone to it. It's not like a fire truck red. It's more of like a candy apple red, if you know what I mean. And I do encourage the blooms and the cauliflowers to happen. So if you have some areas that are a little bit darker pigmented, a little more water in an area, I actually like those. I like when those happen and make funky shapes, little cloudy shapes that we call cauliflowers. I don't mind those. Um, there's a couple, yeah, a little blotchy bit here, like over here. Those are okay in the Canada flag. I've got big, big cauliflowers happening and I love those. The tape is kind of sticking up. I probably made a little bleed under there. That's okay. That's all right. Maybe your paper is bigger than my paper. Whenever you get to like, you know, one, two, three, four, the seventh red stripe, just stop. Don't make more extra stripes. That'll just be blank paper. Okay, there we go. I'll need to set that right there for a minute or two while I do the Canada flag. So we're just staying within the lines on the Canada flag. No tape needed. Well, I suppose we have taper on the outside. Again, I'm not trying to cram paint under the tape. So I'm going to follow the tape or brush away from the tape this way, not, not that way. And if you go over your pencil lines a tiny bit, that is not a big deal. Again, the, the black and white pen lines will be very distracting and just cover that right up. Yeah, so this area might have a little bit more water right there, kind of blob it on. 
that might give me some really cool cauliflowers as it dries. I'm not smudging. Am I smudging the other one? Eh, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely recommend just doing one of these at a time. And then you could, you know, do the second one uh, later tonight or the next day. If you want to use like a smaller brush to get in those teeny little points, do it. Yeah, don't let me stop you from switching brushes just because I'm using kind of my bigger slash medium brush and you're more comfortable with the small, do it. Yeah, some areas I have like a little bit more of the pigment to water ratio, and that'll be okay. That'll be okay. As long as on the whole, it's kind of lighter. Maybe you just want to paint a flag today without the cityscape on top. Yeah, definitely you can just do the flag. You can do the flag and then maybe you want to do, you know, welcome to the, and then put your last name. Welcome to the Bork house. Welcome to the Smith house. Or you can write, you know, anything, anything on top. There we go, nice light red wash. And you can, oh, this is great. I love this happening here. Something's gonna happen right here. Let's see my, a little less of the color one, mostly because it's like straight. But yeah, some interesting little patches are forming. Yeah, I don't mind those, I like those. Let's let this one dry a second. Um, I am going to peel this tape here. Um, where am I going to put it? And I do want to do this um, rectangle. So I'm going to peel, peel this. I can cut it. I could cut it. I want to do the blue rectangle. So you need to take off three bits of tape that we're crossing into the rectangle. It's okay if this line isn't perfectly, perfectly straight. Again, 
pen, very distracting. Okay, so I'm not gonna peel up the rest of the tape just yet. Let it dry a few more minutes, but we're just gonna carefully fill this in with blue and then just go very carefully right along here. If your red is still wet, just don't let the red and blue touch. You can leave a gap. What's a nice, what's a nice blue color for this? I've got, got like seven different blues in this particular palette. So sometimes it's hard to tell which blue to use because they all look very dark in this palette. So I have this little swatch sheet to help me. So which blue do I wanna to use today? Thinking Prussian blue is quite nice. Fresh blue is quite nice. Yeah, having a, a swatch sheet or a test sheet to show you what the colors look like once dry on paper helps so much. Um, I'm gonna use, I'll probably use Prussian blue myself. I'm just gonna swing this around so that the rectangle's closer to me, which makes it easier. Little Prussian. This is my little Prussian blue mixing area. And then to encourage blooms and cauliflowers to purposefully happen. See how there's those patches? I'm gonna just dribble some water in there after I've painted it blue. So first the blue, and just be very careful near your red line. Have I lost my focus? Well, the autofocus will kick in in a second. Sometimes it does that. A big old blue rectangle. Very watery. Mine's very watery. Yours could be darker than mine. That's fine. Lighter. Lighter's fine too. Yeah, it's okay if some patches are a little darker, a little lighter. Okay. So while it's still wet, don't let it get too dry. Yeah, let it like sit there for like a minute or two. And then we're just gonna dabble little bits of water. It's like starting to suck it in a little bit. Yeah, I think that's good. So paint your blue rectangle, wait like a minute, maybe two minutes, and then, so this is just water. Just water on my brush. I'm just kinda doing little, and it doesn't matter where, like I didn't like mean for it to match up with or anything. Here and there. And they'll spread, they'll they'll touch each other. That's okay. You might have like a better effect on one side than the other. Not a big deal. Just kind of adds a little bit of extra special watercoloriness. Okay, I like that. Yeah, do as many as you want or as few. It's really doing amazing blooms right here, but eh, not so much over here. What's going on over there? I'm fine with that. I am okay with that. So that's the first layer of our flags. Um, so I'm looking, sometimes um, there's like really big puddles. So I'm seeing a really big puddle here. Easy fix, grab a tissue or a bit of your paper towel. I have a tissue somewhere. And I could just soak up a little of that just to help it dry a little more even, a little more faster. So I just soak it up a tiny bit. It goes right into the tissue, gently, gently dabbing. 
that'll just help it dry faster, like within a few minutes. And I'm looking at my American flag as well. There's a little puddle like right down here. I'm just gonna soak up a tiny bit of that. It'll dry faster and more even. If I just get a little of it, there, that's a little better. We'll let these dry a couple minutes, couple minutes. If, if you're still doing your, your rectangle, if you're still filling in your, your leaf, not a problem. You have the ability to even pause this too. Um, while we wait that are watercolor, so maybe you're just starting to color um, and you're really enjoying the medium, maybe you're enjoying my teaching style, lots of stuff coming up with me, with Artist Palette Durham Region. So this is the next one, I guess you would call it. Uh, this one's on Wednesday, Wednesday the 7th. It's part of our nature camp. Um, so you can purchase the whole week, which is four, four tutorials. So that's this upcoming week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This one's on the Wednesday. It's uh, water beetles in watercolor. So if you'd like to purchase just this event, you can, or you can purchase the whole week and it's a super good deal. You get four events for $25. Individual events are 10. Um, yeah, so if you wanna try water beetles with me on Wednesday, it's uh, it's on the website, artistpalettedurham.com. Uh, what else is coming up? We've got, this one is part of our space week our space camp week. Um, so this one's on Thursday, the 15th, July 15th. Um, yeah, watercolor, um, like the galaxy is holding the world, like supporting the world. So we do this fun galaxy texture with, um, with salt. There's some salt there. That one's watercolor, um, part of the, the space week. So you can get all four space week events for one low price or just purchase the one event to do with me. Um, coming up nearer like mid to end of July, we're doing kind of an around the world series of paintings. So I'll show you a couple of those. In both watercolor and acrylics, we're doing around the world. It's kind of the theme. This one's in watercolor. Uh, well, you know what that is, the Sphinx and the Pyramids in watercolor. Uh, we're doing this one Wednesday, July 21st at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Join me for that one. Nice, bright, nice bright sunset. Uh, this one's going to be a recording exclusive. Uh, will be available after July 15th, so mid-July to end of July. Uh, the Taj Mahal, it's a it is a tomb. There are people buried there, but it really was a monument um, to, um, I believe the king's wife who had passed, built that Taj Mahal for her, for her tomb. Uh, this one's in watercolor. So this will be a recording exclusive available on our website uh, after the 15th of July. Um, how are we doing? Ooh, okay. That's... I think we can move on. This is doable. So it is mostly dry. Like it's not coming off on my hand. It's a little like cool to the touch. It's a little damp, but that's okay. We can work with that. Um, for the Canada flag, we don't have to do anything to that one. This one, we're gonna peel the tape. This is, this is fun. So we're not gonna peel like the outer, outer tape, just like the white stripes. but do this when yours is dry. Yeah, mine is dry enough to do this. If yours isn't dry, just pause and then wait a few minutes and then catch up with us. Peel those white tape stripes. We don't need this tape anymore, so you just wad up. Add to my ball. So far so good on the bleeds, but I know I've got to have at least a couple bleeds. This is quite a reliable tape for me. Excellent. 
There we go. So I've peeled up the six white pieces of tape that are my white stripes. I'm not going to peel the outer tape uh, just yet. We'll let that be. Where's my garbage pile going to be? Over here. Okay. Got papers all over the place here. Let us, I'm going to, I'm going to start off, I'm going to start off the Canadian flag one, because that's a little easier. Um, I will just, where's my pencil? Okay, so I didn't do like the actual skyline of Toronto. I did the CN Tower. I did the Sky Dome. That's that half a circle kind of dome here. And then I just kind of invented rectangle buildings in either direction. So that's the easier way to do a skyline. Just invent your own rectangles going up and down, skinny ones, wide ones, different heights. And then this one is a little more complicated in that I did try to do certain buildings. I can't tell you exactly what each building is. Uh, that's the Statue of Liberty. So that one's a little more in depth. Um, you could Google, you know, New York skyline and go from there and just sketch your own kind of skyline or whatever city you're in. If you don't want to do Toronto, just Google Ottawa skyline. Chicago skyline, whatever skyline you want to do, Google has the answer, or even just the word silhouette, Toronto silhouette, anything you want to do. So I'm going to make a horizon line with my ruler first, about, would you say that's about a third, thirds, I'd say it's about a third. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it. Maybe about there. Pencil line right across. Okay, then a nice big CN tower. So you can use your ruler or just wing it, but why wing it if you have a ruler? It's very tall and skinny. Something like that. Um, who else? Right there, nice, tall, skinny. And then there's a, well, there's a restaurant in there. It's been a while since I've been up there. I think I've only been once, and I think I was like five. So I don't really remember what's going on in there, but I hear there's a restaurant. So just make a little, what'd you say, like an oval shape. Or maybe like the shape of a stop sign, like an octagon shape for that little, that little module up there. And then, yeah, Sky Dome. Well, Rogers Center, if we're being uh, technical, it's not called Sky Dome anymore. Where's my focus? Where's my focus? I lost it. I'm just going to do like sort of a, a low semicircle. It's not a perfect semicircle. It's more squashed down. Did I lose my focus again? Um, yeah, like a low arch for the sky dome, or you can make it a little more, a little more rounded than I've done it. But you know, it's the impression. And then for the rest of it, you can just make any any size rectangles. You can use your ruler for the whole thing. You could just wing it. I've really lost my focus, haven't I? Isn't that funny? I wonder if it's to do with the light coming in. Ugh. From the curtains. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can't get that focus back on my, on my drawing. See, autofocus is like a necessity because I'm always bringing stuff up, pulling it away, but then it kind of gets a little funky. 
right here. Come on. <laughs> well, I can I can draw a few rectangles in the meantime, and it might just fix itself in a moment. Think tall ones. Think maybe like some angled ones. There's definitely some angled buildings in Toronto. Wide ones, shorter ones. What would make you focus? Just a variety of different rectangles. And it can be messy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, what if I slowly... Eh? Eh? Okay. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, yeah, this one's good. Okay. Whew. Variety of different rectangles. Go all the way this side, go all the way this side. I'll leave uh, you Canadians to it. Or if you wanna do actual Toronto buildings, go for that. Okay, and this one's a little bit more complicated in that I actually made recognizable buildings. So pick a spot to be your horizon. I'm going with the third from the bottom, third from the bottom red stripe. Any, any horizon line you want, really, anywhere you want it. And so a nice big tall building. As I was looking at the, the Google image for these different buildings, I should have made note of what I was drawing, but I didn't. Nice and tall with a point at the top. Yeah, I'll just leave this like right here if you guys want to like work off of that, work off of that image to make some buildings. Don't have to make them exactly the same scale that I'm doing either. Smaller, bigger, your own city. It would be cool to see like the, what's it called, the Space Needle? in Seattle kind of thing. Anything you can come up with. Use that ruler as much as you can. And watercolor painting, are, they're a little messier, a little looser, so we don't have to worry about, you know, perfect, perfect, perfect lines. Do not worry about that at all. I suppose like if you wanted to pause your screen on this image that I'm holding up now and if that help you draw some buildings better you can definitely pause it on this screen right now and then catch up with us when you're done drawing so hold that there or if you wanted to pause it on this image you could pause your screen on this one and work on some of those and then catch up with us when you're done your drawing. Could do that. And I think at the end here, I just made up some buildings to fill the rest of the space. And we'll put 
this way. Yeah, some of these like rectangle ones are just like filling up some space. Um, and I do have some that go a little bit onto the blue rectangle part. That's okay, that's allowed. That's a nice dome on this one. Yeah, domes, angled roofs, um, decorative spires. You can add things, make up your own city. Just make it up. This one's pointed. And then I made a wee little wee little Statue of Liberty. Just basic shape, so like a head shape, arm, hand with a torch. So there's my wee little Statue of Liberty-esque shape. Not a lot of detail is needed on like any of these. And you kind of, you get the sense that it's New York anyway. Um, yeah, some of my lines are like kind of sketchy. That's okay. That's okay. We'll tidy it up with the paint. We'll tidy it up with the pens. I need some up a tiny bit. Yeah, I mean, might don't do a little bit more. Nah. And some other little things in between some buildings, you could definitely do that. And I have space down here is where we're gonna do the kind of drippy, dabby, um, like water reflecting kind of a look. So we don't need to we don't need to draw it with the pencil. We're just going to do that with the with the paint itself. Did I finish this one? I did not finish this one. Do a few more buildings and think about what colors you want to do. You don't have to do the exact colors I'm doing. You don't have to do the rainbow theme at all. What if you want to do more of a a black silhouette kind of a look. You don't have to do the rainbow or you could choose specific colors in the rainbow. What if you only want to do greens and blues? Greens and blues all the way across would be lovely. Um, what if you want to just do various shades of red and purple? Anything at all. And yeah, you guys are just doing doing one while I'm doing two. So I'm just kind of rushing through all these buildings. Yeah, fine tune your building as much as you want. Okay, I've got the basics of my buildings. Let's look at the colors. Um, so I've done like the rainbow order like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, that kind of order, spectrum order, you could call it. But you don't have to do it in the same positions that I've done it. So I've kind of got purple as the middle. I love purple. And then I did red, orange, yellow, wrap it around, green, blue, purple. Over here I did it, flipped around the other way. Here's my purple, red, orange, I don't have yellow, green, blue, back to purple. I need yellow. I think we'll probably add some more yellow over here. Um, yeah, but any any colors you want to do, any order you want to do them. I'm going to do, maybe I'll do the American one. Well, I can maybe try to do both of them at the same time. I'm going to do that. Watch me. Okay. 
I'm going to start with purple, a nice rich purple in the middles for mine, but you don't have to if you want to start with blue as your, you know, focal point. Do that. So this is like a, a deeper, darker transparency. Not light and like a wash like this. More color. Rub, rub, rub. Mix, mix, mix. Again, it doesn't have to be stick straight, perfect buildings. We are going to outline with like purposefully messy pen lines. And that will make it messy on purpose. So um and Kita asks, paper and color. Um, so my paper is Canson XL watercolor paper. It's available at all kinds of places, Amazon, Walmart, all of the, all of the arts and crafts places. And then the colors I'm using, um, well, if you wanna know the brand, it's called Mei Liang, M-E-I-L-I-A-N-G is the brand I'm using, um, but the color that I'm using specifically right now is called, I'm using Deep Violet. Deep Violet is what I'm using right now. Okay, so there's a lovely tall purple building. It's okay if some areas are darker or lighter, more water, more pigment, that's okay too. Blooms are okay in this case. After you do a building of a color, you're gonna make messy blobs underneath it as if it's like reflecting upside down. So same color, just underneath it, just blob it around, blob, blob, blob. So this is a nice tall building. So my reflection is gonna be long and you know all the way down. But let's say I'm doing the reflection of this teeny tiny building I'm gonna do it equally small when I do, you know, if I'm doing green here, I'll do a little bit of green under it to reflect that size. But this one's nice and tall. I can go kind of all the way down, all the way down. Let's see if I can't do both of them at the same time. I might be filming. But if you're if you've already done your first building, go to your second building next to it. So you can go to the left or right. You can go with blue or red next to purple. Do like a magenta. You don't have to go right from purple right to red. You could do like a purpley red. Okay, there's my kind of messy CN tower. And again, I'll do purple blobbed underneath it. Okay, back to this one, I'm gonna do some, I'll do a different color purple. Let's see, I'll do this one. It's kind of a reddish purple. Diana, you're a little late, but you can set the back all the way to the very beginning of the video. So you haven't missed out and it will be posted on our page, on our YouTube page forever. Diana, you haven't done a lot of watercolor, it looks like. Uh, never, okay, never, that's awesome. I love a good beginner. So you can set the playback on this video all the way back and, and watch us from the beginning if you just wanna watch for today and then attempt it on a different day. Um, later on in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about our Watercolor Lovers Facebook group. Lots of fun, lots of beginner friendly uh, activities in there, in the group. Going all the way back to last fall when I started off with, uh, you know, transparency levels, 
working on our fine lines. Um, so that would be a good place to start for you, Diane, Diana. Okay, so there's my lighter purple color. Again, any order, if you wanna go like not rainbow order, you can do not rainbow order here. I'm gonna go into like red, red or pinky red. I guess I can chat about the Watercolor Lover Facebook group as I paint. Um, so it's on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. Uh, so it's called Watercolor Lovers by Artist Palette Durham Region. Uh, you can just search for it in the search bar on Facebook. Uh, I believe I put the link in the description of this video too. I think I did. If you look in the description of this video, there should be a link to the Watercolor Lovers Facebook group. Uh, watercolor spelt with the letter U because we're in Canada. Um, so it's a little more evident here. When I did the dark purple and then the slightly lighter purple, and then I did you know, the blobbies down below, I let them touch a little bit. And you don't really see them blending because it's purple on purple, but here I've got like a pinky color and I let the pink and the purple touch like on purpose. And now some of the purple is in the pink, which I like, I like that. I want that to happen. Going to some of the pink, some of the orange, going to some of the yellow, a little green, going to the blue. That's all good stuff happening down here. We want, we want these bleeds happening down here. Uh, Diana asks, Oh, she's got the she's got the group. Yep. Yeah, Crayola is okay. I know that um, at the very beginning, Vera, another host with us, was using Crayola brand watercolors herself, and you can achieve some good results even with just Crayola brand. So maybe you only have like a set of twelve or something, and you know if the tutorial is like use a red orange color, and you don't have red orange like I do you mix red and orange together easy peasy if you if we're working with like a turquoise color like a blue green and your Crayola set only has blue or green you just mix them together okay I'm trying I'm trying to give this one just as much attention as the other one Whoop, that's a blobby blobby blob well that's now a building we just turned that mistake into a building boom Yeah, so a little purple is going into my pink. That's okay. I'm going to do some red. Yeah, so this painting won't look exactly like my other painting because colors are shifted a little different. different. Different color choices that I'm making. Different mood that I'm in. And your painting at home will look different from mine. It's, it's a guarantee. And that doesn't mean it's wrong. Just because your painting looks different in the end doesn't mean it's wrong. That's what we encourage. We want yours to be different than mine because your personality, your style is going into it. And I don't have any control over that. And this is your world. If you want, you know, certain colors in a certain way, and that's, that's to be celebrated. Diana asks if it's my favorite medium. Hmm. If you had asked me that question like exactly a year ago, I would have said no. Nope, it's not my favorite medium. Acrylic would have been my favorite medium at the time. Um, is it my favorite medium now? I want to say yes. I was sort of a little bit thrust into teaching watercolor um, when I switched companies, but I, I really am enjoying it. I did kind of have to teach myself how to teach watercolor, if that makes any sense, because I had been teaching acrylic for so long. I didn't know how to teach the acrylic, or sorry, the watercolor. Um, 
But yes, I do really enjoy watercolor now. But I do, I do do acrylics as well. Um, there's paint on my arm. That's inevitable. Um, yeah, I really enjoy acrylics as well. And I can even show you an upcoming acrylic. I did show you a few upcoming watercolors. Let me set that down for a sec. I always have something within reach to show you. Uh, this one is my next free event. Um, it's a, it's called Safari Butts. And we're going to do this one, the, which is a week tomorrow. So not tomorrow, the following Saturday. Right here on YouTube Live, join me for Safari Butts in acrylic. Lots of colors, lots of fun. I'd love for you guys to join me. That one's a free event. And uh, yeah, some of the other ones I was showing you earlier, those were the paid events. And I can show you some more free and paid stuff. I've got more of this painting done. We try to do, we try to do at least one free one a week. And then some events. Orange. Yeah, I'm going a little bit outside my lines, but it's okay. I can tidy that up with my pen, my pen lines. Okay. Oh, I got some some red scooching into my orange, and I'm not not too worried about that. I like it. Okay, well, that's kind of a messy, there we go. Just get a little yellow going. Um, Diana asks about the butts, <laughs> the safari butts. Uh, yeah, it should notify you, but it's a week, a week tomorrow. It's going to be at, I believe at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. we're gonna go live with the butts. And I've got another painting in the works of barnyard butts. So similar, similar to the safari butts, but barnyard. I'm excited for that one too. Yeah, messy, my messy blobs are blending into each other. They're gonna make little cauliflowers, little blooms. It's all good. Okay, I wanna work on this side. How am I gonna, how am I gonna move this? Okay, I'll go like this. Oof, don't get a little smudgy. Okay, purple into blues and greens and into yellow. rich blue. Here's a nice rich blue. Blue is appropriate for the Rogers Center for the Blue Jays. So my purple is definitely like dry. But if you wanted to like go back into some purple and purposely dab some purple into the blue, that'd be okay. Nice and rich and dark standing out against our lighter color flag. Blue, maybe into like a um, bluey green. Um, I'll mix some of this with some green. Oh, and a little, little splash. If you have a little splash, just get a tissue, dab it right away, boom. All better. 
made up a little blue green here with some emerald and some Prussian. See what that gives me. Oh yeah. And I did want to do my, I wanted to do that like blue for the blue jays. I'll use this blue. And this reflection is going to be a little bit lower and wider because that's how the building is. There we go. Yeah, you can encourage your paints to blend into each other by like purposefully blending them into each other. And I'll do some of that blue green. Maybe like a, maybe just straight emerald. I'm gonna go straight emerald, see what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, olive green, you can get some olive green in here. Um, let's see, I'll go, I'll go sap green, sap green, or if you have something like, like a lemon lime, if you want to go into lemon lime territory. A yellow green. The, uh, let the two greens mingle, mix and mingle. splashy there. Oh, I got a splashy there too. That's okay. Yeah, we can even add like splashes and drips to this later. I do like that look. little Statue of Liberty is going to be kind of a lemon lime green. Uh, green. 
messy, messy, messy there. So the, the messy bits down here gives you sort of the impression of water and both of these cities are on water. So it kind of makes sense. Ooh, look at all that extra paint I got dripping around there. Um, so same with before when I had like kind of that really deep puddle in the middle of my um, Canada leaf. I just took like a tissue, get a little clean, dry corner of it. You can soak up little areas that have like a puddle forming. Just soak it right up. It'll help it dry quicker and more evenly. Just gently dab, gently dab. Gently, gently. Anywhere a big puddle's forming, just get a little, take a little of it up. So how did you guys do? I was doing, I was doing double time. I did two cities. Did you guys uh, make it through one city okay? I hope you did. Yeah, and if you want to take more time, get the get the blending just right and choosing the colors. You can definitely take your time because you can pause. The technology is wonderful. Okay, I think I got most of my little my little puddles. A good way to check is like literally move it around. Move it around if a big puddle's swishing around, maybe soak that up a tiny bit. How's this one? Not bad. Beauty. Okay, so long as um, it's not super wet near your edges. We can take our tape off now. But if, you know, what if you just did like right here and it's super wet right next to the tape, then I wouldn't peel that just yet. Um, but if you, you know, this side is dry for sure. This side, I didn't even touch that side. So I am able to take my tape off now. But uh, do so gently so you don't rip your paper. Let's say you're peeling this edge tape off and you do rip a little bit of the paper stop stop what you're doing and then come at it from the other direction so if I'm, I'm pulling this way and then it starts to rip here then I'm going to come to this other side and start ripping that way with the tape so I don't make it worse and then you can you can glue that down gently um, or if you plan to frame this painting you could put a mat around so that it covers up the rip kind of a thing. Garbage ball. Let's say you're pulling your tape and you have a big bleed and it's maybe in a place where you know you can't hide it with some scribbled pen lines. You could later on, take some paint and splash it on your picture, like on purposely to kind of tie it in. People will notice the bleed less if there's other random speckles of paint. And then you can say it's intentional. Okay, that one's good. Look at that, I did two paintings, the paint part at least, in an hour and a half. Okay, all my paint, or all my tape is done. But we will draw on these. 
Um, so I'm going to put my paint itself aside. Make way for drawing. Look, this has to be a little bit more dry. A little bit more dry. Where's my pen? So I've got white pen, white paint pen and black. Tidy up a little bit. Um, what can I show you while we're waiting for paint to dry, as it were? Um, where's my... Oh. So here's another upcoming watercolor event with me. It's a two-in-one event. So we're doing this in um, the end of this month, so July 31st. It's a two-in-one. So the first one we're going to do, um, like a coral reef situation with geometric designs on top and a sand dollar con and then the second one of that event will be this cactus with the geometric designs and the flowers so two in one event saturday july 31st tickets available on our website artistpalettedurham.com two for one two in one event like a geometric meets nature vibe. Hello to Barbara. Thanks for joining us. Um, oh, I did wanna, yeah, I'll tell you more about the Watercolor Wednesdays. Um, so in the Watercolor Lovers Facebook group, I do something that I call Watercolor Wednesday. So every Wednesday I post a shorter video, so 10 to 20 minute long video of a free watercolor painting tutorial every Wednesday. What did we do this past Wednesday? Oh, it was so much fun. Where's my, this past Wednesday, so the video's in the group right now. You can do it yourself. Um, I, I went berry picking. I went berry picking for wild raspberries. I came home, crushed them up, and then I made these. So these are bookmarks. I just haven't taken them out of my sketchbook. So the purple, that nice rich reddish purple and the light purple is made with literally crushed up wild black raspberries. And then the green that you see is not green paint. I blended spinach and I used it as watercolor paint. And isn't that just interesting to see and I think it was a success. Like, I don't think it'll go bad. It doesn't smell, it doesn't smell like raspberries and spinach. So I don't know if mold will get involved here, but yeah, I just, I experimented with, these are my experiments with literal food products. I've heard people using, well, I have used it myself too, but coffee and tea to make watercolor paintings. We do that in the Watercolor Lover group. Um, I've heard of people using like turmeric to make a pigment. Use natural products to make your own watercolor paints. Very interesting. So that's an example of what, what we do on Watercolor Wednesday. Um, where's another example of a Watercolor Wednesday? Oh, I did a, you do a contour drawing of yourself, but you do it blind. So you don't look at your paper. You look at a mirror or a photo of yourself. So this is the one I made of myself. Um, if you're new and you've never seen my face before, it doesn't look like this. <laughs> I do have red glasses and a, and a beauty mark. But this was a fun activity in the watercolor group for a watercolor Wednesday. It's so funny. I died laughing. Um, what's another watercolor Wednesday activity? Oh, we did, we did a rain cloud when it was really rainy. So that tutorial is in the Facebook group already. All of these are free in the group right now that you can try. What's another good one? Oh, we did succulents. We did succulents a little while ago. So that video is available right now. We did this sun image to go with our rain cloud. That video is available right now. She says my selfie painting is so cute. Yeah, it turned out so hilarious. I, if you are gonna watch that one, that video of me doing that selfie, turn your volume down at the reveal because I just burst out laughing. And it's a little hard on the ears. Um, did I lose my focus again? Look at those little splotches that happened. That 
successful here, not so successful here, but I'm okay with that. All right, this is, yeah, mine are sort of dry enough to draw on. I might give it a few more seconds, but mostly dry. A little wet over there, a little wet over there. And yeah, my paper does have a bit of a curl. That's okay. Every watercolor paper is gonna curl to some degree. To some degree. Let's talk about what we're gonna do. Oh, we'll hold up this one as an example. Little tiny um, windows, lit windows. You could do less if you're thinking maybe more nighttime and less windows are on. You could do more, whatever you feel like. And I just made little, little hatch marks, little tick marks, as if I'm counting like days spent in self-isolation. Tick, tick, tick. Little tick marks, you know, sort of lining them up with each other, but eh. Not really fussing about it too much. Yeah, there's more little tick marks on the windows. And then just everything else, a messy outline in either black or black and white. Maybe a little detail up here with some white. Really anything you wanna do. If you don't want it as messy as I do it, you don't have to. You could just do like one line as the outline. I just like kind of the messy kind of look in it hides little imperfections along the way. Yeah, so some of it is white and black. Some of it's just black. Up to you, up to you. And then the stars, I did white and black. Yeah, if you wanna use um, white opaque ink and a brush, a thin brush, you could do that instead of like a white paint pen. No, oh, white paint pen. I've got a black ultra fine point marker here, but it, let's say you only have like a Sharpie, like a regular tip Sharpie, that would be cool too. Just whatever art supplies you have, use them and, and own it and make it purposeful. Like you meant to outline it with Sharpie and that's the look you're going for. Probably gonna start with my black. Or should I do the windows? Eh, I'll do the black first. Which one's more dry? Probably this one, a little bit more dry. Literal messy outlines. Sometimes I'm not even following the edges. Sometimes I'm, you know, beyond the edge or on the inside of the paint. Anything goes. You can overshoot the buildings too. Broken lines are fine. So I've done these ones over here. Fast, fast and furious lines. Just whatever, whatever happens, happens. Here. And I don't really outline anything like in the reflections, but if you wanted to, you could. I just didn't, just kept it on the actual buildings themselves. Just don't think about it. Don't try to control every line you make. If you wanna loosen up on your control, if you're struggling with that, hold your pen further back and do your lines. If you're choking up, that's like too much control. Go back a bit on your pen and just let, let the lines happen. Some people struggle with, with loosening up and not having something perfect. It's okay if you do want to do it more precise than I am. Yeah, just, just 
went wild over here. They're just all over the place. What's going on? What's that? Doesn't matter. Get a little tiny bit more precise with like my Statue of Liberty, like the arm and stuff, but still pretty loose and wiggly. I mean, that's really all it took to do the whole skyline, quick. I'll do the second one. You want it to add like little lines like on the top to be like little antennas, like a, like a maybe a little cell phone tower antenna or something. You can add little details like that. Just get in this zone and like my hand does does all the work for me. Like my brain is not really focused on what's happening. My hand is doing it all. But that comes with practice, practice, practice. Um, I did do a little bit of a, a thing in the middle of the sky dome because like it's not a like a smooth dome. There's like that closes because it opens right maybe people don't know that the sky dome opens it's very cool so i just kind of made some lines down the middle for that little mechanism i don't know what goes on there all right there's my messy my messy black lines on both of my cities um what do i want to do next messy i could do the messy like outlines of things. So I went all the way around my Canada flag, all the different sections, even the even the maple leaf. Um, and then on the on the American one, I just did around the outside, around the outside of the rectangle, but I didn't do the black on the on here. I just did the white. But if you want to do the black too, you can. Just a choice that I made. But I'll start with this. And these lines can cross over each other. That's fine. Even later when I'm doing white, and I'm doing white lines, and I'm going like around the maple leaf, I'll go right over the buildings with my white lines too. But you can choose where you want lines to cross over or not. Yeah, so even here, like I have white going right across my buildings. That's a choice I made. So later when we're done our, our paintings and drawing, um, I would love to see the results of your paintings. And a really great place to do that is in the Watercolor Lovers Facebook group on Facebook. Let's say you, you don't have Facebook. You could email us, we'd love to see it. See, like, look how, look how messy I go, like, way off, all good. This isn't even straight. Not a huge deal. It's a flag. Maybe the flag is blowing in the wind. I 
think it gives it more like more flavor, more expression. Yeah, so I think the messier the better, in my opinion. In my opinion. Uh, Diana was asking about my paint pen. So I've got the Artistro paint marker pen. Amazon. I got this on Amazon. Um, seems to be working fine for me. Sometimes it gets a little like dry. So I just do it with the shake and then, you know, press it on a surface and then it gets the paint going again. This is my Amazon permanent marker, ultra fine point, any kind of micron pen. I've got others. I've got others hanging around. This one's just go to. Okay, there's some black on that one. Let's do this one. So I'll I'll walk you through um, doing the stars on the American flag. I probably won't show you all the stars because they're a little time consuming. Um, but you can definitely do all your stars on on your time at home. But I'll definitely walk you through how I did the stars. And I probably won't show you all the little the little lights in the building. I'll walk you through some of the buildings, but that would take a long time. And no one wants to just watch me make a million little hatch marks. There's black around there. I'll do black around my blue rectangle. Even just going straight through buildings, just cut right through them. That's fine. Where else do I have black on this one? Uh, just on the stars, really. Okay, so I'm done on the black. For now, get my white paint pen wherever it went. Here it is. Get it flowing. Yeah, little ticks, little tiny. You can do two together, one on its own, three together. kind of picture the different levels like each floor and you know choose how many how many offices on that floor have lights on a whiteout pen I think would work really well here I wouldn't do them like on the Statue of Liberty. That doesn't make sense, right? So I don't know, like, is that something you can go into, climb up into her head? I don't know. And if some of your lights don't perfectly match up with other lights on the same floor, that's okay if they look a little off. No one's, no one's taking a ruler and going, oh look, that light is kind of between floor 19 and floor 20. No one's doing that. Yeah, I like having little like little clusters of two together, three together, and have some like right. I do have some that are right down at the bottom, like by the horizon. Because, you know, there'd be some little little stores with their lights on right at the very bottom. Oh, I do want to put a little black along my horizon. I didn't do that. A little black right along the horizon. Uh, not perfectly straight. Mine's all wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. This one needs it too.
Oh, that one's way off. Yeah, that just helps with the, that horizon line. Diana says that you can't go into her head anymore, into the Statue of Liberty. Okay, so maybe in the past you could, maybe, maybe it's uh, COVID rules or maybe it's just too many tourists on the site. That's what my, my little of lights look like in the buildings. I'm not going to do every, every, every one. That's going to take a while. And then I'd have to do this one too. Let's do, I'll do a few in here too. Oh, and I could do a couple lights in my, in my top little restaurant of the CN Tower. Oh, and look, I put a little tiny mark to be like those little elevators that go up and down. Here's a little mark there, and here's a little mark there, because I know there's a couple that go up and down, so you don't have to wait for just like one. Make those little little elevator things. Make some little windows in my restaurant. Um, and then I think I put some dots up on here, some dots way up here to be like those little flashy lights. So. Airplanes don't run into it. I did some little dots on that antenna. Yeah, and then just put some little windows here and there. I'm not going to do windows on like the CN Tower, or not the CN Tower, the Sky Dome, the Rogers Center. I will add a little bit of white, which is a highlight. And then what? White uh, in other places. So I'm going to do white around um, my maple leaf. Same messy outlines. People will think this is such a got artsy, an artsy choice to make all these, these lines. And it's really just to distract from our wonky lines from earlier. I'm gonna do some around the red rectangles on the American flag, some white along the red stripes. Some white along the buildings too if you want maybe like um choose one side to be like the highlighted side if there was a light source like left side top side as an option left side top side left top left top and where else is going to do all these red stripes get a little white accent. I even just cut right through my buildings with these white stripes. I don't even don't even mind that the buildings get get lines through them. A little white on the horizon. Some white with the black on the horizon is fine. Yeah, keep going with your little windows, windows throughout, and then uh, what am I? Stars, stars. Okay, um, one, two. There's nine, nine rows of stars. If you want to get technical about it. And it goes six stars, five stars, six stars, five stars, six, five, nine rows of that. So do you want to bust out your ruler and measure them precisely? Or do you want to just wing it 
do six, then do five, and just work your way down. Up to you. I did mine. There's nine rows. One, two, six stars, then five, then six stars, then five. And they, you know, they kind of alternate. Okay, anything wet? Nope, nothing wet. And I'll just do your basic five pointed star. Uh, the glare is pretty bad. There's six messy five pointed stars across. So then your next row is be like between those and there's just five of them. Six, then five, then back to six. So first I did them in the white and then I did them again in black, but not going perfectly over the white lines I made, just a little off so that you can still see both the white and the black. And they stand out a little more. So there's the black with white, and there's just white. There you go. Continue that all the way down. If you end up not having exactly nine rows, that's okay. No one's counting. No one's gonna count. I'll do I'll do a little bit more of this. sort of the same size. They're sort of lined up, but but we can afford to be a little messy here because it's art. Okay, so there's, you know, that's about half, and then I would just keep going all the way down. Yeah, windows, keep going on your windows. What else can we add? If you want to add other details, you can definitely do that. Other silhouettes, add like buildings in between if you have bigger gaps and it looks a little bit too gappy for you what about if I added a little a little ship because she's you know at the harbor maybe there's a boat right here I could add a boat um, what could I add you can add um, an airplane in the sky flying by with like one of those banners flying behind it wouldn't that be cool I could say something on the banner happy Canada day kind of thing it would be fun Denise says she did the Tennessee skyline. I love it. Great idea. Yeah, I just, I like the, there's a bit of a pride aspect to this too with the rainbow. So you can maybe go with that kind of message with pride and, and the flag kind of thing. Yeah, different, different countries, different skylines. Uh, uh, what if you want to do the flag and then silhouettes of animals? of the country, anything really, anything. So, you know, I did, you know, 90% of the painting is done, just little details like more windows, more stars. And what was that? That's like two hours. I was kind of planning for like a two hour thing. I think we did good. You guys did so good keeping up with me. You had some really good questions. What else can I tell you, show you? Um, yeah, definitely, if you want to join our Facebook group, please share the results of your paintings today. I'd love to see them. Try out some of our Watercolor Wednesday videos. Um, so this, you know, all of our YouTube live videos are free, and we have a whole bunch of them. Um, we do accept tips if you wanted to send me a couple bucks. Um, I do appreciate that. It goes towards more art supplies. What else? <laughs> um, yeah, we love putting on these free events for you at least once a week. We do 
we do accept little tips if you if you felt the need. Another way to support me, if you don't feel like tipping today, another way to support me and other hosts online, your favorite hosts online, to purchase tickets to their paid events. Because that's our, our bread and butter in this uh, strange time of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Even like maybe you've done several free events with me and you want to support me by buying like one ticket to one of my paid events in the future. I, I would love that. I'd love to see you in, in the zoom in the, in the paid events we're in zoom. So I can see you, you can see me. It's more, uh, more one-on-one -on -one with the artist. I can give you like live feedback on your actual painting because you can hold it up to your camera. And I can give you some tips on the zoom. I love the zoom events, more intimate setting. Love it. Um, what else can I tell you? Ask, ask me anything. AMA. Type something in the in the chat in the comments there. Bring back my inspirational. Every day's a good day when you paint. Who said that? Bob Ross. Bob Ross said that. That's my philosophy in life. Every day is a good day. I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions coming up, guys. Maybe I've answered all your questions that you have. <laughs> Perfect. I've done my job. All right. Well, I'm going to have some dinner. I haven't had dinner yet. So I'm a little hungry, a little peckish. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, you know, say hi if you are joining our Facebook group. Um, there's like one membership question to get in the group. It's super easy. I know that you'll know which answer to pick. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been fun. Uh, enjoy your uh, upcoming long weekend. If you if you're celebrating a long weekend this weekend, 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 weekend. I just said it like eight times in a row. Okay. Not so many questions coming in. You're welcome to Diana. You're welcome to Anneli. Thanks for joining me, Denise. Elena, thanks for the emojis. Fun. <laughs> All right, guys.